this week a comment on a video came through and it said, I love how you always um, run your hands over your plant. That's actually on purpose because I'm trying to strengthen the stems of my plants with a little bit of resistance. Oh, I need to put, I need to plant this out. Look, I've got borage blooming in here. I've got nasturtium blooming in here. Can y'all believe how much my seedlings have recovered? I'm gonna step out of here because I don't want to turn the fans off and forget to turn them back on. I have it set to turn on if it gets a certain temperature in the greenhouse and I can override them but if I forget to turn that back off they might roast tomorrow so I'm running my sprinkler in the evening the sun's going down this is not highly suggested as a good idea <laughs> it's, like, it's kind of creating the optimal conditions for potentially disease to water your plants like as the sun's going down um, I've done everything by the book before and still had disease and I've, I've done everything wrong and it's gone pretty okay. I always tell people, well, yes, yeah, it's good to do best practices. It's good to water early in the morning. It's good to harvest your fruit in the heat of the day and everything else before the sun touches it in the morning. It's good to, it's good to do a lot of things. But my garden was really dry and I had a busy afternoon and I know I have a busy morning, and so watering it tonight rather than versus it getting crispy tomorrow is good enough. This is the view from sitting beside me on my little garden bench. I like it very much, what do you think? So, a little reminder if you missed my video yesterday. Okay, this is just out of the reach of the sprinkler. <laughs> My green stalk secret sale is happening right now, which basically they've taken my regular coupon code. I always have a discount with green stalk available to you guys. It's roots 10 R O O T S one zero all caps. And they've made it take $50 off the seven tier leaf right here behind me that has salad greens and some flowers growing from seed in there. They're just getting started. And also the five tier original, which is what I'm doing my micro dwarf tomato project in. It's what the day you see this video will be the second day of the sale. So it's May 1st through 3rd. Those two planters, if you buy over $150, you get free shipping. So you can essentially get two for not a whole lot more than what one would normally cost you. So I'll put a link down below. Just wanted to remind you guys. I feel like every time we do things, um, when they're over, inevitably I have all these people being like, oh, I missed it. And I'm like, I really tried to tell you. <laughs> I really, I really wanted you to know. <laughs> shirts, that just happened with shirts. Because uh, we just closed our shirt pre-order. Um, we're going to open another one of those soon. But I do try to keep you informed. Also, if you're not already signed up for our newsletter, uh, definitely get signed up for our newsletter. I'll put a link to that also. But that way you will have a more direct line. And especially if you're like cooling it on social media and you're not watching a lot of YouTube or something like that. So I bought this on a roadside stand the other day. I don't know why I just put my headphones back in. I've been listening to a podcast. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna chase the squirrels tonight, guys. It's gonna be that kind of evening. We're just hanging out. Sometimes I feel pressure to like be a presenter and that's not what this is about. We all know that's not why you're here tonight. <laughs> We're just hanging out. Um, I've been listening to a podcast this evening. There's a guy that I love listening to. His name is Ed Milet. And I'm actually very new in like the, like I guess motivational self improvement realm. I've never like followed anybody or listened to anybody in that. And about six months ago, my friend Daniel sent me a podcast where this guy was a guest on Ed Milet's podcast. And I will find that and link it. Uh, basically this guy had done some really extreme stuff. He'd like walked across Antarctica and um, climbed Everest and done all of these amazing things and he was kind of talking about the headspace of doing these things and it, that led me to listening to Ed Milet and it has been so good for me. Honestly I've been doing a lot of things in this season like working out and like learning some personal disciplines that I have not had in past seasons. Obviously, I mean like I've worked hard for a while now with the farm and 
you know, you don't put as many YouTube videos out as I do without working really hard. That's true. Also, I have a lot of kids. Sometimes whenever people are critical of the place where our business has gotten, it's gotten big and they're like, you probably don't even do the work and all these different things. I'm like, honey, you do not get <laughs> five son as healthy and acting as respectful as mine without doing some work <laughs> but i digress uh ed mallet has been really awesome he just has such a, a encouraging approach to things so if you're looking for something good to listen to i don't know him i've never talked to him um i hope to someday i think that would be really awesome but um it's just been really good he has such a positive outlook he really values treating people kindly and um and just commitment and it's it's helped me a lot in this season of growing in that so i could have told you all of that not in the squatting position which you know <laughs> I've been working out, so this is easier than it used to be. <laughs> I got down here because I wanted to show you my angel trumpet flower. Okay, so I bought this on a roadside stand. Um, that's a big thing here. Right now, it's like there's pop-up nurseries everywhere because South Carolina, you know, a lot of plants are grown here. Like Costa Farms is not very far from me. I think it may be over the state line into Georgia, but that's not far from me. You'll just be driving down the road and you'll see these places and just greenhouses or high tunnels as far as you can see that grow plants. And because of that, all over the place here, people pop up and sell plants. And I bought this one, if you're local, at Randall's Produce. They've got a lot of plants out there. They don't always have plants for sale. And so this is, um, let's see, deer resistant, blooms midsummer to late summer, partial to full sun. It gets four to 15 feet tall is what the tag says. And it says it has fragrant flowers. Now I bought this doing no research at all just, huh, I'll buy this. And uh, I actually got it home and decided to start researching it to decide where to put it. And I had a friend who had one of these in front of her house and I thought it was really beautiful. Um, and I remembered, thankfully before I planted it, that I had done research then and I was thinking like it was really poisonous to goats or something, so I thought I'd look. And from what I'm reading, it's like a very poisonous plant all around. And I'm trying to decide where I should plant it because I was really wanting to put it here in the garden. Um, obviously, I don't anticipate like people coming through and eating a bunch of stuff. I'm growing sweet peas for the first time. Not having goats, I'm gonna stand up, that would be better. Not having goats has given me a little more freedom to plant things that are poison to ingest. Like somebody was telling me the other day to be careful with the sweet peas because if Bear eats them. But Bear actually, he doesn't mess with my plants now. I haven't brought Lulu in the garden just a whole ton other than on a leash we're working on training. But hopefully I can train her not to mess with them. The other dog, none of the dogs do eat them. And cows respect fences. So like we've been here for a, a, over, let's say a year and a half we've had cows now and I don't think, I cannot remember the cows getting out of the fence a single time. I mean, we have, we built good fences and we have an electric wire on them, so they're definitely secure. But goats, man, just in the period that I had my goats here, they got in the garden a couple of times because they managed to get out of the fences. So I'm feeling some freedom to plant things that maybe need to be handled with caution, but I feel like I need to do a little more research on the angel trumpet. Does anybody know, will you guys tell me? I'll, I'll check, I can Google things obviously, like I can do the research, but if you have a personal experience, I would really love to know it. That's the other reason why we're here, right? <laughs> oh, hey zucchini girl, hey Zuzu. <laughs> zucchini is such a pesky cat, this is what she does. It's actually kind of dangerous because she will trip you up. Like when I start to walk, like she does not get out of the way. Like she gets right in between my feet. But she's very sweet. I enjoy having her around. I just have to be mindful of where I'm stepping. All right, I'm gonna turn the sprinkler off. Oh, Gabe, he's coming. It has been kind of interesting this year though, like growing the sweet peas and stuff. I'd never put those in the garden before because the risk of the goats getting in and obviously eating a bunch of something that would hurt them. I've never had azaleas before on my property for the same reason because az azalea bush, as well as I think rhododendron is the other one, they'll kill goats. And you know, a lot of things, animals won't eat it. 
and we were talking about the buttercup the other day I said I wasn't sure what this flower was and um, several of you were talking about how it's buttercup which that's what I was that's what I thought it was but I just didn't really know much about it we've been knocking it down but it can be damaging to cows but they won't eat it typically unless they're starving and they don't have anything else and of course mine have lots of other grass as well as hay mostly animals will not eat the stuff that will kill them but goats they will kill themselves on, a, on an azalea bush. And I've known people whose goats have killed themselves uh, eating stuff that they cannot have. So I was always super cautious. And now I'm, I'm out of goats. Pesky garden kitties though I have. <laughs> <laughs> and good loyal dogs. I've got quite a few of those. Another thing I have considered growing in my garden this year I'd have to buy a plant because I didn't start any seeds. I've considered growing a couple of really hot pepper plants. That's something else I've never grown in my garden because I always had little wee ones, babies with me in the garden and I was always afraid they were gonna grab something and put it in their mouth that was gonna be hurtful to them. Now we still have Harlow around. When she's here, she's in the garden with me, but not nearly as much as it was when it was my babies that obviously were in the garden with me every day for substantial amounts of time where I was really having to do a lot of garden work with like toddlers under feet. Um, lots of chances to accidentally grab something. Now my kids are big enough that if I post a sign that says, this is dangerously hot, do not eat it. They will at least be able to read the sun and make an informed decision, but they're, my kids are pretty cautious. Hey boy. Rawr. Rawr. Ben just got dropped off by dad in the driveway. You gonna check on your plant? You could go get, yeah, the, I'd go fill it up over there because this one is connected to the, the sprinkler and Robbie did not get water. I just watered everything, but he was in the table, on the table in the middle, so he didn't get any. The mark of a true gardener. Doesn't even make it in the house. He gets it from his mama. <laughs> I'm gonna go hang out with my kids. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.